So let go of those things that have held you back and begin to walk with the living God as God in the earth today. And you shall see yourself from the future. And you'll be able to walk in the things that you thought were completely impossible before. Well, uh, you should know this. The Holy the Ghost is God in the earth on. today. Jesus Say God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. Right? We have this message here. We've been talking about it quite frequently. Right? And if you're new to the website, well, welcome. But here it says, be still and know that I am God. Well, in our dispensation, the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. Amen. Now, a lot of people don't know. Say, so don't, know. don't know. They don't know that He is God. So they can't really be still and know that He's God until we teach them about how to be still and know that He is God. Is this making sense? Yes. Because we can be still and know that He, say He, He, he the Holy Ghost, is God. He will be exalted in the earth. Who? Holy Ghost. In the earth. God. Are you getting this now? Yes. Now, they might not have gotten this back in that dispensation, Old Testament times. But listen, in our dispensation, we should immediately know that it's the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today. And when it says something like this, be still and know that I am God and I'll be exalted in the earth. Who's this talking about? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. Now, not everybody knows that. Do they? No. Well, if you stick around here long enough, you will know that. The New English translation says, Stop striving and recognize that I am God. Now, a lot of people are striving against what I would have just said. They're striving against the fact that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today because they don't want that anywhere in their, their thinking. Are you here? Yes. Stop striving against and recognize that He is God. Who is God? The Holy Ghost is God. The Hebrew word, it literally means to drop it, to drop something. Drop it. Drop it already. He is God. He's the one Jesus sent into the earth. He is the living God in the earth today drop it already drop it and recognize that he is God because you can't be fully say fully fully, fully engaged in the dispensation we're in if you're if you're somewhere else you ever play stick with a dog what do they want to do when they bring it up to you normally they want to hold on to it well you can't hold on to it and have me throw it you understand you have to let go of it before I can do what needs to happen we have to let go of this religious conception that the Holy Ghost isn't God in the earth today are you here yes. let it go that way he can therefore say he can yes. then he can start to do the things that he's the only one qualified to do in the earth are you getting this yes. at some point you got to make up your mind okay the Holy Ghost he is God in the earth today I'm gonna walk with him by saying words just let go of the stick let him take it I'm anointed for this message whether people like it or not some people will hear it they even heard that I'm anointed for this message of the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words and I can't think of a more important message to have but you got to keep beating on this message until people get it sometimes you got to say the same thing over and over and because we didn't all get it the first time either you know we weren't always waking up in the morning going hey Holy Ghost I worship you you're God in the earth today I get to walk with you being fully in your dispensation that didn't just happen it took a while to get here and we had to have a lot of things beaten out of us say a lot of things, lot of things. Beaten, beaten out of, us. out of us remember the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth and he will beat the unbelief out of you he will beat the bad doctrine out of you if you let him in love of course right so some things you have to keep preaching on say keep, keep. Preaching, preaching on uh. it's over and over and over repetition until you get it 
faith comes by hearing and hearing you didn't get it the first time so you keep hearing you know a lot of times I'll I'll hear something with the ear of my spirit and then I'll rewind it and I'll listen to it again because I didn't quite I knew something was there it sounded different say it sounded different it sounded different. it sounded different something happened in there and I wanted to hear it again and then when I heard it again it was like oh yeah that was good so you got to keep preaching on some things until people get it until their thinking changes is it easy to get somebody's thinking to change no not all especially if they've been brought up that way remember they used to say you can't teach an old dog a new trick reminding me of the dog story I remember I was getting the car fixed and this dog he was just kind of hanging around the garage and he came up to me this you know I hope this applies it's a good story sometimes it helps to get people listening you know and so this dog came up to me and I pet him you know he's just really trying to sniff me and make make sure that I was okay or I didn't stink bad or something anyway and so he was hanging around and then I looked at him and I said where's your ball and when I said that his his ears you know his eyes lit up and his ears were like what ball and then he went and he just disappeared and I'm like oh what I do offend you or something he said some bad word well two minutes later you know he comes back trot trot with a frisbee that looked like it'd been really chewed up and it was nasty and disgusting well I grabbed it anyway you know and then I and and he was like mm, no no you can't have it you know he gives it to me but then you know he relaxed say he relaxed, he relaxed and he let me have it at which point I could do what I could throw it for him and we did that for quite a while till he got tired but he'd do the same thing every time he'd come back and he'd like Ugh. Uh, he want to pull on it you understand yeah. but it wasn't until he let go that, you could... that I could then do the thing which which is what he really wanted me to do you understand mm -hmm. so sometimes you just got to drop it you got to drop that religious thinking that's holding you back from believing that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and when you begin to know that he's God he'll begin to do things he'll throw the Frisbee for you are you here so you got to keep saying it over and over until people get it until their thinking is changed and if their thinking changes what happens their believing changes mm -hmm. what do they then start believing that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him are you here yes. have I ever said that before yes. said at least a couple times this morning this evening whatever time it is <laughs> believing has to change we've had bad theology that doesn't let us go here We've been brought up with bad say bad theology bad theology, bad theology and, and has kept us from going here first Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 and how you turned to God say to God so they turned to God from idols right they turned to God from idols to serve the living God now what did people do with idols they worshiped them there's actually a couple translations that say that it says that you turned from worshiping idols mm -hmm. are you here yeah. they turned from worshiping idols to worship the living God that's repentance you understand from idols to serve mm -hmm. the living and true God who do you serve here it specifically says the living. the living and true God is this in your Bible yes. so here Paul's writing to the Thessal Thessalonians mm -hmm. and he's saying you turn from idols mm -hmm. worshiping those idols to worshiping the true and say worshiping worshiping, worshiping the true and living God yes. so if I were to say I worship the true and living God would this be okay yes. would this be scriptural yes. say I've turned from my stupid idols and even some of my old religious thinking I turned from that I repented from it and now I'm serving and worshiping say worshiping, worshiping. the true and living God and most people wouldn't have a problem with that mm -hmm. would they yeah. but what if I say the true and living God is the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna shorten that up and say I serve and I worship the Holy Ghost then everybody's like oh I got a problem with that serve literally means to ascribe ownership if we serve the Living God we're ascribing our life as being owned by him we're as, as, 
ascribing ownership is this making sense am i speaking english sometimes i wonder or lordship you're ascribing lordship to the living god the true and living god does this make sense if i'm serving him or worshiping him i'm ascribing lordship to the living god i'm ascribing ownership to the living god who owns me the living god who's lord the living god that i've given lordship to that's what it means to serve here second mm -hmm. corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and what agreement has the temple of god with idols remember we were just talking about this they turn from idols to serve the living god right for you are the temple of the living god who are you the temple of the living god you turned from idols and you became the temple of the living god first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost second corinthians 6 16 said your body is the temple of the living god here it says your body what know you not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost the holy ghost is the living god specifically so called here in your bible what know you not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which you have of god and you are not your own remember you ascribed ownership to him you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body god who god the holy ghost whose temple you are are you getting this so who is the living god holy, holy ghost. ghost is the living god who do we serve and ascribe ownership and lordship to the holy, the holy ghost because he's the living god we've turned from idols to serve and worship the true and living god who would be the holy ghost are you getting this is this settled in you now it may be settled in you and it's settled in me from just running over this over and over and over and over again but if it's not settled in you then you need to go and you hear it again and you hear it again because it needs to be settled in you that there's one God in the earth today he's the living God his name is Holy Ghost and when you turn from sin you return from, you turn from idols you you ascribe lordship to him in the earth because he's God in the earth are you getting this read that one more time now that we've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Holy Ghost is the living God and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living God to ascribe ownership to the living God to worship the living God if I say that I worship the Holy Ghost am I being scriptural yes. am I obeying scripture yes. yeah I am so ascribe Lordship to the Holy Ghost that sounds strange second Corinthians chapter 3 and let's look at verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit yes. when's now now in our dispensation in our age now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is or where the spirit is lord there is liberty the opposite of that would be if the spirit's not lord in that area of your life you don't have freedom there you don't have liberty there is this making sense but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord who's the spirit of the lord the holy ghost so when it says now the lord is that spirit who are we talking about the holy ghost we ascribe lordship to him he's the one we serve he's the one we worship as the living god in the earth say i worship the living god, I worship the living god. who are you saying you worship when you say that the holy ghost is it wrong to worship the holy ghost no absolutely not it's absolutely right to worship him now if he's the living God he's truly alive if I worship him and serve him what's that make me truly alive here it says freedom right 
where the spirit is lord over your life there is liberty or there is freedom there is life so if you want to be truly alive you want to be fully alive fully free where are you going to be fully free and fully alive with the spirit being lord what if it that's diminished in some degree because of your religious thinking then you can't be alive to that degree you will be hindered we must know him as god be still and know that i am god be still let it go drop it and know that he the holy ghost is the living god are you getting this yes. relax drop it submit to it recognize say recognize, recognize. and that's part of my prayer for people especially people online is that they recognize that the holy ghost is god and because when you recognize that he's god what should that inspire in you to serve him and worship him which means you're going to use the words i worship you holy ghost the holy ghost said that to me if they knew me as god they would worship me does that make sense yes. so if they're not worshiping the holy ghost what don't they know they don't know him as god right be still and know that he is god if they worship me they would know me as god are you getting this this is how a lot of your thinking gets changed when you finally relax let go of the stick that you've been holding on to so i have a, a directive and a commandment to preach holy ghost worship in order to bring in holy ghost worshipers or make holy ghost worshipers if you don't preach the worship of the holy ghost meaning you say the words i worship you holy ghost worshiping the holy ghost is god if you don't preach that then people can't become that does that make sense yes. so i have a commandment to preach i must preach holy ghost worship in order to bring in holy ghost worshipers or make holy ghost worshipers who serve the true and living god the result of my preaching should be that people realize that he is God and begin serving him and worshiping him as God does this make sense yes. and when they worship him as God they'll begin to know him as God mm -hmm. now if you didn't like that you really won't like this regular Christianity isn't gonna cut it why is that because regular Christianity doesn't tell you to worship the Holy Ghost are you here yes. I'm preaching out of the scriptures I'm telling you I'm commanded to preach this so that you can begin worshiping the true and living God who is the Holy Ghost who's the only part of the Godhead in the earth today are you here yes. regular Christianity I'll say it that way isn't going to cut it the problem with Christianity my brothers and my sisters in Christ the problem with Christianity is that they don't tell me to worship the Holy Ghost have you ever had any of them tell you to worship the Holy Ghost Christianity no well then they can't go here all of the benefits that come from serving and worshiping the Living God they can't go here is that a problem it's a huge problem the problem with Christianity my brothers and sisters in Christ is that they don't tell me to worship the Holy Ghost who is the Living God Holy Ghost worship does something it does something to you number one we already talked about that it begins to reorganize your thinking it create corrects your bad theology it introduces you to the Holy Ghost who is the Living God as God in the earth today yes. most people are blocked from that and certainly aren't preaching on it and therefore they can't go there mm -hmm. but worshiping the Holy Ghost and I'll say using the words I worship you Holy Ghost because unfortunately if you say worshiping the Holy Ghost people that goes through their filtered religious colored glasses and they think something completely different than what I'm actually saying I'm actually saying you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost Do you understand try that I, I worship, worship you, you Holy Ghost you just worship the Holy Ghost those words aren't really found in Christianity either they're not telling you to worship the Holy Ghost who is the Living God <sighs> but if they will hear they can go where it will take them and if you begin to worship the Holy Ghost I said even said that you'll begin to know him as God why because you're worshiping God 
it does effectual work in you it begins to rewire you into this dispensation you become fully present say fully present, fully present. in this dispensation did you get that mm -hmm. you become fully present in this dispensation most people are not fully present in this dispensation their religious doctrine the way they've been thinking is holding them in some other dispensation is this fun yet mm -hmm. how can we effectively do what we're supposed to do in the earth if we're not fully present in this dispensation mm -hmm. you ever you ever talk to somebody who wasn't really fully present with you well that's all the time now people with their phones they're like oh yeah mm -hmm. What's that yeah uh -huh, yeah right are they fully present are they really listening to you no they need to put the phone down and pay attention we need to be fully present in this dispensation worshiping God who is the Holy Ghost who is the Living God in this dispensation but our religion has kept us out of that so we're only partially present and you go to almost any church and they'll have partial pieces of the Holy Ghost present hopefully something mm -hmm. using the words I worship you Holy Ghost does effectual work it does effectual work in you but it also does effectual work in the earth now it's too late to tell me say it's too late. too late it's too late to tell me that it doesn't work or it doesn't do effectual work why because I've been worshiping the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. it's like somebody emailed me the other day told me that tongues were just being made up that we're just making up this stuff creating our own languages and you know well you know how does he become the expert when obviously this person doesn't speak in tongues when I've been speaking in tongues for over 30 years you understand you're like thousands of hours too late to tell me that speaking in tongues doesn't do anything I've had result after result after result from speaking in other tongues speaking in tongues is wonderful Paul said I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all wrote half of the New Testament you're too late to come try to convince me that speaking in tongues doesn't do anything you're too late to try to tell me that confession of the word doesn't do anything if I take a verse of Scripture my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus and I put it in my mouth I put it in my mouth I say it and I say it and I say it. guess what happens it comes to pass in my life you're too late to tell me that that doesn't work you're also too late to tell me that worshiping the Holy Ghost doesn't do anything when I use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost Holy Ghost I worship you I worship you Holy Ghost things begin to happen you begin to be changed are you here yes. he does things for you he visits you he who he, he the Holy Ghost who is who the Living God by the way you're supposed to be a temple of the living God what is the temple supposed to do worship God who is the God that's in the temple the Holy Ghost the living God are you here so the number one thing say number one thing, number one thing. the number one thing you should be doing is worshiping him glorify God in your body worship God in your body what God the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. my Christian brothers and sisters don't tell me to do that did you know that notice I say my Christian brothers and sisters I'm not saying they aren't my Christian brothers and sisters I'm saying that they haven't come here and if they don't come here listen they can't partake of the benefits and the effects that that has on them it's literally a, a, a work of the Spirit that happens on the inside of you Holy Ghost worship or using the words I worship you Holy Ghost I'm gonna say that probably over and over so that you don't mistakenly think that I'm talking about something else I'm literally saying you say the words I worship you Holy Ghost out your mouth mm -hmm. I worship you Holy Ghost it does something different to you than praying in tongues does mm -hmm. oh you're preaching against praying in tongues <laughs> that's just stupid mm -hmm. I preach in, uh, about praying in tongues all the time it does something different than praying in tongues it does something different than confessing the word it does something different than any of the other things you could be doing mm -hmm. worshiping God you turn from idols to worship the Living God mm -hmm. 
when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost it's a diversity of operations it does something different to you and in you and through you than all of those other things can do it fully rewires you into this dispensation mm -hmm. how many people that you know are not fully rewired into this dispensation most people I know are not fully wired into this dispensation they're wired over here and over here and a little bit here and a little bit there you understand they're not fully present they can't be because if they're going to be fully present in this dispense say this dispensation whose dispensation is it the dispensation of the Holy Ghost and it's only his dispensation where's the father in heaven where's Jesus in heaven at his right hand who did they send Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today Holy Ghost who do you walk with in the earth Holy Ghost who are you the temple of the Holy Ghost all of these things fully wired into him fully present say fully present I hope I'm getting this across who am I gonna be fully present with Holy Ghost the Living God who it's exciting you could have been you know you could have been born in Jesus dispensation those, those years when he was on the earth that was Jesus's dispensation you couldn't have been fully present with the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost was not yet given that wasn't this dispensation say that wasn't, that wasn't this, dispensation. this dispensation you might have been able to be present with Jesus for a very short period of time and as wonderful and great as that was Jesus himself said it's better if I go away John chapter 6 verse 29 Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent now in Jesus dispensation who is he talking about himself in our dispensation who would he who would this be talking about the Holy Ghost this is the work of God this is how God works Say, this is how God works. This is, how God works. this is the work of God that you believe on Him whom He has sent. Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of the Father, and they sent the Holy Ghost. Who are we supposed to believe on if we're going to do the works of God? The Holy Ghost. If we're going to be fully present in this dispensation, we have to be believing on Him. I worship you Holy Ghost does effective work he says if you want to do the work of God you're gonna to have to get in line with the work of God right believing on the Holy Ghost using the words I worship you Holy Ghost does a work say a work a work of belief this is the work of God that you believe on him this work of worshiping him causes you to believe on him greater than you did before it does a work of belief so who did Jesus send the Holy Ghost whose dispensation are we in now today the Holy Ghost's dispensation so we believe on him who Jesus sent it's how we do the work how do you think you're gonna do the work in the earth today with him the Holy Ghost you got to believe on him right what's sad is that we the church have lived almost through this entire we're at the end of this dispensation mm -hmm. are we not we've lived almost it's sad we've lived almost this entire dispensation not believing this we've tried to live in Jesus dispensation it's important for you to have this straight so that you can be straight so you can be fully present in this dispensation the only way you're gonna be fully present in this dispensation is to be fully worshiping the Holy Ghost you're in the Holy Ghost dispensation the Holy Ghost dispensation didn't start until after Jesus left and sent the Holy Ghost so everything that he said and did was not in this dispensation in order for this dispensation to even exist Jesus had to leave is he here no. who's here the Holy, the Holy Ghost 
jesus's participation in this dispensation is minimal at best the bible does say he intercedes for people but he's he's in heaven praying for people do you understand yes. let's just establish this a little further go to second corinthians again second corinthians chapter 5 verse 6 therefore we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body we are absent from the lord does your bible say this yes we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body what does that mean alive. while we're alive in this physical body we are what absent from the lord does that mean we're talking about jesus here you understand mm -hmm. better clarify that right now in your body right now until you die and go to heaven mm -hmm. when you die and go to heaven where are you going to be with the lord it goes on and says that but while you're in your body you are absent from the lord you know how many people hate this <laughs> this is black and white as clear as day while you're in your body jesus is not here mm -hmm. is this okay yes you got to get this straight because we've already covered who is here the holy ghost living god right yeah. whilst we are we are always confident i'm confident knowing that while we're at home in the body we're absent from the lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident i say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the lord so when you leave your body or you die or whichever how do you get with jesus you have to be out of your body mm -hmm. when you're in your body jesus isn't here mm -hmm. say when i'm in my body, when I'm in my body jesus, isn't jesus isn't here when i go to heaven, go to heaven jesus, is there. jesus is there is that okay mm -hmm. you got to get these things straight but while i'm in the body we've already covered this i'm not going to go over it again while we're in the body you are the temple of the living god and you walk with the living God and you should worship the living God and when you do use the words I worship you Holy Ghost he begins to wire you fully into this dispensation and until you're fully wired into this dispensation you're gonna be thinking something else we must be fully present with the Holy Ghost what if I told you this was the Holy Ghost I just wrote this down he said this to me so take it if you can what if I told you that if you would worship me the Holy Ghost I would radically change your life if you would worship him the Holy Ghost he would radically change you to the degree you wouldn't even recognize yourself if you saw yourself in the future you would say who's that he'd say that's you from the future when you worship the Holy Ghost it positions you it's a positioning power it sets you rightly it wires you rightly it's an obtaining power you're able to obtain things that you weren't able to obtain before mm -hmm. it's a transforming power do we need to be transformed to go to the powers of the world to come yes what's gonna do it worshiping the Living God the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. you're not gonna get there without it we must be fully present here in this dispensation before we can go to the next i'm often curious about people that think they're walking around with jesus how is he going to return until we fully let him go away let it go just let it go drop it drop it you ever say that to a dog that has the stick drop it drop what let jesus go so that you can be fully present so you can be fully present in this dispensation whose dispensation the dispensation of the Holy Ghost who are you fully present with him where are you going to the future who's in the future Jesus is in the future who's returning in the future Jesus is he gonna return if we don't get to the future and we aren't fully present in this dispensation no and then the Holy Ghost says this to me when your worship is full the meeting takes place when your worship is full the meeting takes place and I've had this happen over and over and over again what do you mean meeting I mean him meeting you and doing something for you 
I'm worshiping you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost when when I get to a fullness of that a meeting takes place when the church comes to the fullness of worshiping the living God in this dispensation a great meeting shall take place a meeting that we've been waiting for for years and years but until we're fully present and fully wired into this dispensation that meeting can never happen so let go of those things that have held you back and begin to walk with the living God as God in the earth today and you shall see yourself from the future and you'll be able to walk in the things that you thought were completely impossible before we thank you for it Holy Ghost we thank you for this message this evening we thank you for anointing us and anointing the ears of the people at home and we ask that this message Holy begin to Ghost multiply quickly in the earth today. in Jesus name Holy Ghost,